Hi, this is Les Levine, the self-proclaimed voice of truth and reason in Ohio sports. I can't remember the last time I walked away from a Browns win thinking it was more like a Browns loss. Maybe it's a culmination of the poor play and the coaching over the past four losses, or maybe it's my total lack of faith in Freddie Kitchens to get the job done. Nine straight plays inside the two-yard line, no touchdowns. Having a 6-0 lead and not going for a chip shot field goal that would have given them a 9-0 lead. Calling a timeout with three seconds left in the third quarter when Buffalo seemed to have no desire to call their own timeout. The only excuse on any of them would be that a field goal opposite the dog pound might have been much tougher due to the wind and other than a Browns early extra point miss due to Jarvis Landry's ridiculous penalty in the end zone, there's no reason to believe that. So now it's on to Steelers week. Ben Roethlisberger has thrown more touchdown passes at First Energy than any Browns quarterback in history. But he's not playing this week. Hopefully the Browns and Baker Mayfield can make a dent in that stat. Doug Lee Maurice is here. More sports and Les Levine is on the air. From the worldwide headquarters of More Sports and Less Levine, it's a Monday night, it's a brand new week. Good evening, everyone. Welcome once again to More Sports and Less Levine into its 24th consecutive year, and of course, seen exclusively on Cleveland.com. Doug Lay Maurice, a guy of all seasons, especially bad ones like snow and rain and Brown's four losses in a row, but they made up for it yesterday. You were so mean in your intro. They won last man, you're Rick. <laughs> Listen, man. I, they didn't I thought, win. I, I thought Buffalo I lost. I thought, well, I will say that. The, if Russell Wilson had been the opposing quarterback, right. if if uh, Tom Brady had been the opposing quarterback, this was the blessing of Josh Allen. And I know Josh Allen actually has had some decent fourth quarter drives. I thought the Bills were bad, at, and and their schedule had puffed them up. I think as we talked about last week, they're they're not good. They're not good. They were a soft six and two. Again, the Browns moved the ball. If if the Browns do against the Steelers and against Baltimore and against some of the other, the Miami Dolphins look like they have a pulse. Right. If the Browns do the same things they did on Sunday going forward, they're going to lose some more games. All right, let me ask you this. I don't know X's and O's from a load of soap. I'm, I'm, that's my disclaimer. Me neither. Explain to me how I knew that they were going to have quarterback draws and they didn't seem to know. I'm talking about with, the Browns with, not seeming to know that Buffalo was going to run a quarterback draw. Yeah, I mean, they, you, you spread a defense out like that. I think part of it is Steve Wilkes using this 4-2-5 uh, defensive look with only two linebackers, which right. makes sense. Um, so you, you're trying to cover everybody, and you know you would like to maybe spy that quarterback and leave somebody right. in the middle field in the middle of the field to make sure he can't do that. Uh, we've seen other teams do that to the Browns before. You know, you, you can't cover everything, and I get that. Every defense has a, has a weakness somewhere. I would rather make Josh Allen throw Correct. to score. Rather and you've than seen let, him run that drop play He wants to times. run that. Yeah. He, he looks, I mean, he's not Lamar Jackson, but he's, he might be close to that. He wants to run. There may not anybody, there may not be anybody like Lamar Jackson. No, the Browns could have drafted Lamar Jackson. But well. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I agree. No disagreement on that, yes, they should have stopped Josh Allen on that and had a better plan for that. But also, you know, I think the defense did enough to give the offense a chance to win. So, you know, I don't think Josh Allen is good, but I wish they would have taken that away. This uh, portion of More Sports and Less Levine uh, brought to you by our friends at the Ohio Lottery. Doug Lane Maurice is with us. You can call us at 216-575-0403. Email us during the show at reallesslevine at gmail.com. All right, uh, the Browns uh, get a win. A win is a win, by the way, which happened to be our Facebook question of the week. Is it is it a, is a win a win, or do you need more to it? But a couple of questions arise from it. First of all, I thought Baker Mayfield played pretty well. Yeah, um, you know, it's hard again. Here, are we gonna? It's like, are we gonna nitpick the good things? It's funny, the twenty-five yard completion, twenty-four yard completion to Jarvis Landry, where he kind of caught it out of nowhere right. to set up the Higgins touchdown. 
Kareem Hunt's open on a wheel route on that play. Odell Beckham Jr. is pretty open in the middle of the field. It looked like he threw to the most covered guy. Now, they completed it and it set up a touchdown. Yeah. I get it. It still feels like there are times, and I actually, I'm going to write about this at Cleveland.com on Tuesday. I watched Odell the whole game. I just focused on him, watched the coverages, where he lined up, was there a safety over top of him. And there are just, it just feels like there's more opportunities for him than they take. That being said, Higgins is open because they double up the side with uh, with the two receivers, and I think that made it wide open for uh, for Baker to complete that pass. Odell's been doing that all year. He yeah. clears out zones. He brings the extra safety with him, which allows one-on-one -on -one matchups. Did we learn anything about the Browns team, the Browns players, the Browns coaching staff? Uh, I thought a drive at the end. I thought for the offense to come down and drive at the end. And again, even though it's Josh Allen, and I think you have to say that, uh, the defense did – did, did enough on the last drive. I certainly was prepared for the idea that, like, hey, look, the Browns went down the field and scored to go ahead, and the defense gave it right back up because that's what they did against Seattle. So that defense had to get it stopped at some point, and they did. What did you think about in the opening when I said they had a 6 nothing lead, they were struggling in the uh, red zone, let alone the goal line? Uh, you, don't you have to put points on the board, take the chip shot field goal, make it a two-score score game? I thought so, and... I, I don't know the answer to this. I would like to ask Freddie Kitchens about it. I don't know what happened the other time it seemed like they were going to go for it in the red zone, right. and then Chris Hubbard got the false start penalty. Hopefully and they on kicked. purpose, by the uh, way. I think maybe the Browns were going to try to draw Buffalo offside on fourth down, that they weren't going to actually go for it. That's like that's the Chris Hubbard version of, like, Sashi Brown forgetting to put the A.J. McCarron train <laughs> in, right? It's like, oh, I accidentally made us kick a field goal. Um, well, he should uh, take credit for it. I would... Oh, Chris, Chris Hubbard should take credit for whatever he could take credit for because he's still missing some blocks in the <laughs> run game. I wish – you can't will something into existence. And after you didn't make it, two penalties, five other plays that had not worked on the goal line, I think maybe you say, you know what, this is not going our way. We'll not take today. the three. Let's get a two-score lead because you gave Buffalo the opportunity. When Buffalo scored, then Buffalo went ahead. You didn't want to give them that – you shouldn't have given Buffalo that chance to take a lead. Right, and – I don't, I don't know what uh, Jarvis Landry is thinking about. He scores a touchdown, and I know six points is big, and it's more than one point. But when you take away that one point, it changes whether you're going for field goals, touchdowns, whatever. He's, he's got to know better than that. I talked to Jarvis a, a lot about it after the game. I asked him about the penalty, and then I we sort of stopped and moved on, and I went back and said, listen, I'm, I'm not trying to be a jerk. I said I'm not trying to be a jerk about it, but couldn't you maybe just not give the refs a chance to throw a flag on you? He sort of was kind of saying he didn't really think it was should have been a flag. And, and he said, and the story's on Cleveland.com, you know, I am who I am. As I pointed out in the story, when Jarvis stands up in the receiver's room on the Hard Knocks video and is trying to change the culture here, everybody loves that fiery guy then. That's the same guy who got the penalty in the end zone. So... You know, sometimes you have to take the good and the bad of somebody. I don't think any Browns fan would say, we don't want Jarvis to no. be a leader. We don't want him to be fiery. Is that being a leader? I don't think it's ridiculous to say you can be fiery, you can get your team riled up without going at a guy's face mask and giving the ref a chance to, f to throw a flag. I get it. It didn't cost him. If that's what you have to, if that's the price you have to pay for Jarvis Landry's fire, I guess you'd rather pay it than not have it. I don't think you have to pay it, though. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. RealLesLavina, gmail.com. Doug Lay Maurice is here. Let's break down the win yesterday. The uh, Browns with their third one of the season. Let's take a look at how they did it as uh, we'll check it out here. All right, take the points. As, uh, let's, I guess we could argue this. I say take the points. You're up by three or up by six, rather, and you've got Josh Allen going. Two scores is going to be hard for him to overcome. No, and I, I, I think that's reasonable. And, again, they just – when you saw – I don't know – it's like we could talk about the goal line stuff forever. We had People had asked, why aren't you targeting Odell in the red zone more? They targeted him three times on those eight snaps, two pass interference penalties, and a fade that didn't work. Uh, I thought some of the other things, I think Steven Carlson missed a couple blocks. It's like this is a, a tight end that you're playing because other guys are hurt. He's lined up as a fullback on one play. Doesn't seem to get the right lead block. I thought Farrell Brown might have missed a block. They had a couple guys on the edge one time. Two guys blocked the same guy, and somebody else came free and made the tackle on Nick Chubb. 
you know, Freddie, I think on, on Monday sort of said, well, I think we had it schemed up and we had it blocked up. I don't, I don't know if they did. I thought there were free runners in the Bills' defense that made those plays in the run game. So, again, when all that's going wrong, then kick it. There was a uh, movie a while ago, It's Complicated. What's so complicated about getting one run when you have Nick Chubb and uh, you've got Kareem Hunt? How, why is it so complicated? Well, I did ask Joel Batonio about this after the game because when they failed there and, and did not score, Batonio came off the field and was very animated for a moment, said something to Freddie Kitchens, not confrontational, but you can tell he was, he, he was upset. And I asked him about that. And he said, you know, I'm just, I'm just mad that we didn't score. Um, but I said, is that a moment where you would want to say, like, hey, I'm Joel Batonio. I'm the best offensive lineman on this team. Run right behind me. Just, just hand off to Nick Chubb. I promise I'll get you the half yard. And he said, listen, the way Buffalo was playing a six-man front, we didn't have enough guys to block everybody individually. Sometimes we just, just ram it in there. He well, said it wasn't that easy. Brings me to my final point here. Avoid the middle. If you've if you got six guys in the middle, it's a big field out there. It's 53 yards wide. Now I feel like I'm defending the fact that they couldn't <laughs> score from the half-yard line eight times. They tried the toss. Yeah. They went with the toss on... I think the second play after the play that was a pass interference to Odell, they tried to toss right, and they lost a yard and a half. That got blown up. And they tried, tried to toss outside on fourth down. That got blown up. They're not blocking on the edge. I think there were some tight ends who did not block on the edge. They did not account for every linebacker in that situation. Maybe play action, a pass to the tight end. I will say, and I'm going long on this, I know. The two things that didn't work in the red zone the week before, right? They threw the pass in the end zone to Demetrius Harris. He didn't get his feet down. Right. Those eight plays, they never threw a pass to the tight end. People loved to throw to the tight end in the red zone. They didn't do it. The sneak on fourth down with Baker Mayfield fell short, didn't work, didn't run a sneak. So it was like, well, this didn't work before, so let's try other things that also didn't work. So at least they failed in a new way, Les. And isn't that progress? Excellent. All right, so let me ask you this. I'm thinking of a promotion for the show. People register, they enter, whatever, and the winner gets to go up to the playbook and take one play out, and I'm suggesting it's the shovel pass. Again, like the one that they dropped that you thought was, I, I will tell you, Ohio State used to run that play all the time. It's, it's actually not that hard to run. Like, it looks, <laughs> it's, I think sometimes the Browns do it, and we saw the one that got picked off against New England. Sometimes they do it, and you think, why are they trying this crazy play? Why are they trying to trick? It's not a trick play. It's just, it's really, truly yeah. a normal football play. And there's the backup that if you drop it, you say, oh, that was a pass. And that's the whole point. When Ohio State first unveiled that in 2014, JT Barrett threw, like, 10 touchdown passes that year on a half on a two-inch yeah. flip. That's a phony that's pass. That's a pass. Yeah. And we were like, I thought at the, initially maybe they were like trying to pad JT Barrett's stats. Right. And they're like, no, the reason we do it that way and it's not a handoff is so if you drop it, it's an incompletion. Right. So the Browns did it right. Their failure was smart. Speaking of failures, the game was filled with mistakes yesterday. Of course, the Browns win it. So let's take a look at some of the failures as uh, we go on. Doug Maurice is with us from uh, Cleveland.com and The Plain Dealer. And are we going to get to that or not? Let's forget the failures. Oh, Let's think all right. positive. All right. I'm going to think positive. I'm positive that Antonio uh, Callaway should have had somebody drive into the game yesterday. So listen, I don't know. Obviously, our Mary Kay Cabot at Cleveland.com is reporting he was, he was benched because he was late to the game. I think he should be benched because he shouldn't play. <laughs> so if maybe the, he was. He's imprecise. He is imprecise. The drop in the end zone that he popped in the air that turned a touchdown into an interception. Yeah. Some, a, a, a false start flinch penalty he's had. I don't think he runs precise routes. I do not think Antonio Callaway runs the route that, it, that Rashard Higgins ran to get wide open for the game-winning touchdown. If that's Callaway, I don't think that is a wide open throw for Baker Mayfield. I don't want Antonio Callaway getting the ball in the red zone. He's a deep threat. They've used him in tight spaces. He's not comfortable there. I would play Higgins over Callaway anyway. So if this is like a one-game thing where he's back, I would not want him back. Play Higgins. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. Doug Murray does a great job covering the Browns as well as Ohio State. We'll talk about the Buckeyes a little bit later. There are over 238,000 winners on Ohio scratch-offs every day. With that amount of winning, stop by your local retailer and try your luck on any of the popular holiday-themed scratch-off from the Ohio Lottery. You can follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash more sports and less Levine. As you know, your comments and pictures and all that will be shown uh, when we get to that segment of the show. 
Doug Lamer is with us. More sports and Les Levine continues exclusively on Cleveland.com. Presque Downton Casino now has sports betting. Use one of the 50 state-of-the-art Bet America kiosks to place your bet. Then watch your favorite games on our new HD televisions or visit our new sportsbook area only at Presque Downton Casino. As a kid growing up, my dream was to go to college, play baseball, and get a degree. Coming out of high school, I had two choices. I was accepted into a four-year university, but I decided to come to Tri-C after receiving a scholarship. I got my associate's degree at Tri-C. They transferred all my credits straight into Baldwin Wallace, so I started at Baldwin Wallace University as a junior. My name is Tyler Leonard, and I earned my first degree at Tri-C. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. This segment of More Sports and Less Levine brought to you by Northeast Factory Direct. Birthdays for today, Pie Trainer, the Hall of Famer, George Case. A pop fly was born on this date. I don't know if you're aware of that. That's not real. You don't think? Les, you always trick me with these things. Corey Snyder, how about him? I heard of him. He was on Sports real Illustrated. <laughs> Joe Carter is seen on the right. Uh, Victor Cruz and Mark Sanchez, all born on this date, November 11th. Uh, today is uh, 2019, 216-575-0403. So Nick Chubb uh, got some company in the backfield, and that, of course, uh, Kareem Hunt. As a whole, what did you think of that and the way they used the two? More than I thought. Kareem Hunt, again, as we wrote about at Cleveland.com, Kareem Hunt really blocked really well. And the one thing, again, to double back on our discussion about those eight plays in the red zone, they did not try those guys together in the red zone. That was still pretty early in the game. I think that might be a package that can help them at the one-yard line next time, Chubb and Hunt together. All right, so 24 uh, carries between the two, 116 yards for, uh, for Chubb, 30 for Kareem Hunt. I think he gave you all you could ask for, maybe more. A couple of passes uh, for Chubb and seven. Uh, seven receptions for Kareem and receiving yards five and uh, 44. So they got an extra wide receiver out of the deal. They really used him out in the slot a lot. They lined him up right next to Odell sometimes and I think and created some mismatches for a defense trying to figure out what was going to happen there. They really did use him as a receiver. They weren't just throwing the ball to him out of the backfield. When you can put personnel on the field and then you the defense doesn't know what your formation is going to be based on your personnel, that's a great advantage. The way they moved him around a lot, I think, can really help them down the line. All right, so the Steelers uh, provide the opposition coming up. Uh, and they, they kind of showed that the Rams are not who the Rams think they are, as, as did the Browns for the most part. But uh, Thursday night, short week. Um, who knows what injuries will pop up. Are they, however... Steelers have now continued their winning streak. Are the uh, Browns catching them at the wrong time? Uh, maybe. I mean, it seems like Mason Rudolph is is maybe a guy who can get you through a game. And again, as Baker Mayfield and Mason Rudolph know each other from the Big 12. Um, that defense is so good. But again, you know, we, we've all fallen into this trap of like assuming, well, the schedule's going to let the Browns maybe get to a decent record because everybody on the schedule stinks. you got to beat a good team. And if the Steelers are showing that even with Ben Roethlisberger, they can be a good team, um, the Browns have to rise to that challenge. The, the, their offense is not going to put up a huge number, but their defense is going to make it tough on Baker Mayfield and everybody else. 216-575-0403. So you see the records 1-5 and five in the first five, using three quarterbacks. Uh, now the last four, they're 4-0, four oh, scoring, uh, well, scoring 22.8 points a game in the first five. Not that many in the, sec in the uh, last four. And uh, that's a defense, rather. And uh, it's pretty impressive defensively. The Minka Fitzpatrick, obviously, the trade for him has, has helped reshape that defense. And, you know, you would like to see somebody in the Browns secondary 
play at that level. Denzel Ward, I do think, has played very well uh, when he hasn't been hurt. But, man, you'd, you'd like someone to, to change a game the way Minka Fitzpatrick Look at has. that. Seven uh, in seven games, five interceptions in seven games. That's the one thing this Browns defense isn't really doing enough of is forcing turnovers. And Minka Fitzpatrick has allowed the Steelers to do that. Am I wrong in thinking that uh, Ward had a terrific game yesterday? No, I think he did. I mean, I think, you know... Uh, it's hard. I wrote right after the game about how everything it just feels difficult with this team. And, you know, you'd like a pick six here and there. You'd like, <laughs> you know, I mean, that's a lot to ask. It's a lot to ask. So that's, but when Denzel Ward's the number four pick in the draft, I think it's okay to ask that. But in terms of like locking guys down, making it difficult on the Bills, um, yeah, Denzel Ward did his job most of Sunday. Well, you're right. When you think about it, they don't get that easy score that just makes let allows the offense to rest while they're on the field. Actually, yeah, a, a, nothing is easy for the Browns. They don't, they're not throwing 80 yard touchdown no. passes. They're not getting uh, turnovers backs. that set up short fields lately. At least um, they're not getting you know defensive touchdowns. They've really have. To, they're just driving long distances on these drives, and it's hard. And not getting long punt returns is that the design of Prefer just to, to do that, just hang on to the ball, or do they want to make something happen? I don't know. Dontrell Hilliard was handed an opportunity with the trade of Duke Johnson, uh, and does not necessarily s seems like he has seized that very well. So uh, they, but they do not seem very dynamic in the return game right now. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. you got three great locations for Northeast Factory Direct, east side, west side, and south side. The south side, of course, is the new one on Freeway Drive. That's in Macedonia. No gimmicks, no uh, deceiving blowout sales, just three huge bare-bone warehouses filled with the same stuff you're going to find at the big stores, except for one thing. It's going to be half the price and even more left uh, taken off that final price. Northeast Factory Direct, uh, the bottom line is nobody's going to touch their everyday savings or their quality. West 140th Street, that's in Cleveland, the old B&B appliance in Euclid, and the new one, Freeway Drive, that's in Macedonia, Northeast Factory Direct. Northfield Park, your home for live and simulcast racing, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday and Sunday. Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, post time 6 p.m., and it's uh, 6.40 p.m. on the weekends, uh, no place better than that. North is uh, Northfield Park, been around for years and they do it right. And that's, uh, of course, they're open early every day for the live simulcast all over the world, all the great tracks that you've heard of, and now you can see them at Northfield Park, where it's free admission, free parking every day. When we get back, what's Mike thinking from uh, our friends at Nature Stone? More sports and Les Levine continues with Doug Lay Maurice, exclusively on Cleveland.com. No other company or product can match the features, benefits, and warranty of an authentic Nature Stone floor. There was moisture in the basement. It ruined the carpeting. The smell was terrible. We didn't feel safe in our own basement, and that's when we called Nature Stone. And with Russell's promise, our true unconditional warranty, you will never have to replace your basement flooring again. Get Nature Stone installed by the end of October and save up to half off. Schedule your free cost estimate easily online today at naturestone.com. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. National holidays expert Mary Mary here with a list of holidays you won't want to miss. Get your Ohio Lottery Merry Million Scratch-Offs for National Donut Day, National Have a Party with Your Bear Day, Pickle Day, National Unique Talent Day, Take a Hike Day, and America's favorite, National Jukebox Day. Every day is a reason to celebrate. Grab a Merry Millions and other Ohio Lottery holiday scratch-offs today. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen. For old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory.
Time for how come quickie, uh, Doug, help me on this. How come if you go to a complimentary valet parking and you say nice shirt, that apparently isn't good enough? I mean, to me, that's a compliment right there. I am always too cheap to pay for valet. So yeah, I'll try that next time. See if it works. Just say nice shirt. <laughs> nice shirt, get my car. <laughs> Please. No, I think if you're going to do that, your car may not be there when, yeah, they, when they come yeah. to get it. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. Let's bring in Mike Massetta from Nature Stone and bring some uh, something to our f uh, proceedings here. Hello, Mike. How are you? <laughs> Good, Les. How are you doing tonight? Good. Say hi to Doug Lay Maurice. Hey, Doug. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Mike. Good to have you. All right. Thank you. So uh, an email comes in during the break. Paul and Finley says a couple of a couple more head scratchers for Freddie. Kareem Hunt on the sidelines for every one of the ill-fated red zone close-up plays. Why? Good question. I think you addressed much of that. But also he says the Browns back with their backs to the goal line with the suspect offensive line. They call a pass play. Result is an ob obvious safety. Let's talk about the safety. What what were they thinking on that play? You know, I think there was a breakdown in, in, in maybe the protection call there. They had two possible blitzing linebackers on the edge. One dropped into coverage on Odell Beckham. The other came uh, and sacked Baker Mayfield. You know, they've gone empty. They, uh, empty has been effective for them. There are people who think they should go empty backfield more. But again, maybe run it. Maybe run it from your own goal line first and get a little When you got room. that running attack, that's, little breathing that's room. for sure. Hey, Mike, just in general, what did you think about yesterday's game? Well, I appreciate the fact that they, they played hard and fought till the end, and they beat a, a team that was 6-2 and two and had played uh, uh, New England real tough, you know, and almost pulled that game out. So I, I appreciate that. But there were a lot of things during the game. I mean, I don't, you know, it, 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 the goal line play, it, was, it actually was from the eight-yard line, I believe. So it wasn't a goal line play. Um, I don't quite understand the call, but, you know, on first down, but they – you know, it, it, putting him in shotgun from the eight-yard line didn't really bother me all that much. But what did bother me is every time they ran the ball from inside the one-yard line, they didn't have a, 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 a fullback. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm wondering why. I mean, they take a tight end or another lineman or somebody and put them in front of Chubb and let him, let him blow the hole. He only needs to get a half yard and reach out over the goal line. You know, get somebody in front of them to open up the, the, the hole and let them get through. So that, and they ran, I think, seven plays in a row without a a, 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 a fullback. So there were there were a lot of things like that that, that kind of happened during the game that were a little bit bothersome. But at the end of the day, you know, what what can you say? They beat a quality team at home, um, and and that's that's always a good thing. And they fought hard all the way till the end. You know, they they could have they could have just. Uh, 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 packed it in after uh, um, uh, Buffalo scored to take the lead, but they didn't, you know, and they, and they, and they fought real hard there. And I thought their defense uh, had, a, had a nice game with the exception of maybe a couple of drives. All right, Doug, what do you think about anything he said there? I raised my eyebrow uh, at the idea of Buffalo as a quality opponent. Again, just kind of I think the Bills stink and they haven't beaten anybody. So, <laughs> But I get what you're saying, and I do think – they did learn, right? So we're talking all this about the red zone. They scored in the red zone on the pass to Rashard Higgins at the end of the game. So if they had had the same problem again, they wouldn't have won. They finally got it done. Right. The fullback thing is very interesting. I think they, they actually did have Steven Carlson, the tight end, in at fullback, I think on the first run play, the second play and that goal line package, and they ran wide, and he did not get a block on anybody. I think it's a hole in the roster, and I am far from the first person to suggest this. There are some beat writers on the, who cover this team who have been wondering about a fullback for a while. They have a bunch of tight ends. They have some injuries there, clearly, which is why Carlson's on the active roster at all. But they don't have a guy. We talked about it, everybody, for Cleveland.com yesterday, and, and people were suggesting, well, put Larry Joby at fullback or put, put somebody in there to be a lead blocker. I would say maybe make a roster move so that you have a fullback on your roster that in those situations or others, you do have a lead blocker. I know it's kind of old-fashioned. There are some teams who do it, though, and maybe they could use it. I don't think many teams have fullbacks. Well, I, all I know is that the San Francisco 49ers played in prime time earlier this year, and their fullback got hurt, and all they did on the broadcast was talk about, like, this guy was the best player in the NFL, Kyle Jerkazinski or something. So... Some teams use fullbacks, and it just looks like they maybe could use help there. Now, the other thing is Kareem Hunt blocked well, but I don't think you're going to line up in the I formation with Kareem Hunt no. as the fullback. No, but so did. I don't know. They, they need to figure out something at the one-yard line. Yeah, though. he did throw a couple of nice blocks. All right, so, Mike, uh, where do we go from here? You get the win. You're 3-6. and six. 
Uh, you don't want to get ahead of yourself now. You've got Pittsburgh coming to town. And then uh, Miami, who so somehow won another game. So what do you think goes forward over the next couple of weeks? Well, I, Pittsburgh reminds me, and and I understand what, what, what Doug's saying there. Buffalo was 6-2 and two coming into the game. So by records, you know, standard, they are a quality opponent. If they win a couple more games, they've got a chance to make the playoffs. But Pittsburgh reminds me of a very similar team to Buffalo. They don't have a strong uh, – they're not getting strong quarterback play, although – you know, Rudolph is a rookie, or, or he might be in his second year, and he's a, a, a backup, and he's come in there, and he's throwing the ball okay, but he's certainly not a strong quarterback. They're not scoring a lot of points, and they're winning games primarily with their defense. So this is another game that's probably going to be very similar to the Buffalo game in that it's going to be low scoring, and it's going to be a, more of a defensive struggle, and kind of whoever has the ball at the end of the game with timeouts should should be, you know you know could end up pulling it out with a field goal or a late touchdown the same way it happened yesterday. Hey, by but the it's way, a, it's a winnable game for the Browns. There's no question sure. about it. Yeah. By the way, uh, two months ago, we're sitting here on this show and every on my radio show, any of these other shows, and we're saying, okay, the the only question marks about this team is the head coach and the the uh, f the kicking game. Well, this kicking <laughs> game, this cipher, it's unbelievable. Oh yeah, they and, picked and, the right and, guy. And so is the uh, the punter, Gillum. Mm -hmm. He's incredible. Yeah, you figure, why go with rookies? But, but they haven't been a problem at all. I keep expecting it to blow up in their faces, and it, and it doesn't. So, all right, so what do you think here? Uh, ba Baker looked a little bit better to me uh, yesterday. How about you? Short, short passing game with Baker. Get the ball out of his hands quickly. I mean, I, I, you know, I've been screaming for it. They, they appear to send uh, players, too many players, out on long pass patterns, 15-plus yards. Uh, regularly, they send uh, uh, running backs out on wheel routes instead of uh, uh, dump passes. With Kareem Hunt, somebody brought up an interesting point to me. Baker may be missing uh, uh, Johnson, the, the, uh, uh, the, the former running back who was here, who caught a lot of passes in the short variety and would gain, you know, those 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 what they call extended running plays. It's when the pocket breaks down, he can dump it off for three, four, five yards or whatever it is. Kareem Hunt seems to have filled that role last week. And so if, if, if that's the case, and, and Duke Johnson was that important for the offense, maybe having Kareem Hunt there as a safety valve is going to be helpful. But short passes, gets him in rhythm, he throws for a high percentage, he's still going to throw for 250 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Uh, I just I, I like the, the play calling a lot better in this game than it had been in previous games. All right, Mike, there's only one thing to say at a time like this. You ready? <laughs> I'm ready. Wow, it's Nature Stone. There you go. <laughs> we'll talk to you next week, Mike. Hey, hey can, I, can I give one, one shout-out to the, the Shaker Heights girls uh, field hockey team? They finished second in the state last week. Good for them. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, I, guess, yeah, yeah. I guess you can do that. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, you did it already. All right, All right Mike. I did it, yeah. yeah. Good, good friend of mine's daughter plays on that team. Her name's Hillary. They did a Excellent. tremendous job. Mike Massetta from Nature Zone. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Cleveland Bill writes in, so far the Browns have been a tale of two uh, suspensions. Uh, so Les and Doug, the Browns were 2-2 two and two when Callaway returned, then went 0-4. Kareem Hunt returns, Callaway's out, and the Browns go 1-0. and The Browns are 3-2 and two without Callaway. Why should he be reinstated versus the Steelers? I mean, I, you can reinstate him. I wouldn't play him. <laughs> I, I, w I would have him fourth on the receiver depth chart, but I do think the other points we're making here, is it possible that Kareem Hunt is like a game changer for this offense? They used that two running back set much more frequently than the average NFL usage of two running backs, but it is a wrinkle that I think can be more than a wrinkle and absolutely can change this offense. Well, not only that, it, gives, it makes the other team work harder in, prepare, in preparation for you. Yeah, for sure. It, it just gives you more options, and we've talked a lot. I mean, Odell Beckham has not been super productive. What we've talked about mostly the whole season is what you brought up. He opens things up for other people. What if Kareem Hunt helps finally open something up for Odell Beckham? I just There's more chess pieces for Freddie yeah, here. You don't, it could be really good. You don't think that would be the combination, but it might just might be. And that's why they really did. If you watch, go back and rewatch the game. They lined up Hunt and Beckham right next to each other a lot. And a lot of times, maybe you start getting some rub routes in there. But if there's a safety over top, both of them, maybe he goes with Hunt one time instead of with Odell. They are desperately trying to get Odell in one-on-one -on -one situations. And if you have to account for Kareem Hunt in the pass game, I think you increase the chances of that.
Doug May Murray is with us from Cleveland.com and The Plain Dealer. And uh, we do the show live from 6 until 7. If you can't get in on the phone at that point, you can go to the voicemail of Truth and Reason. Call anytime, uh, leave a message, we'll use it on the show. 216 200 6650 is the number to call. 216 200 6650. When we come back, we'll talk about Chase Young and his suspension. You know anything thing about it? Not really. Not really. You want to make up a number? Uh, probably two. Okay. Probably two. <laughs> That's less than four, I can tell you that. Yes. We'll come back in a moment. Buckeyes number two, probably. More sports and less living continues exclusively on Cleveland.com. As a kid growing up, my dream was to go to college, play baseball, and get a degree. Coming out of high school, I had two choices. I was accepted into a four-year university, but I decided to come to Tri-C after receiving a scholarship. I got my associate's degree at Tri-C. They transferred all my credits straight into Baldwin Wallace, so I started at Baldwin Wallace University as a junior. My name is Tyler Leonard, and I earned my first degree at Tri-C. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter. Here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant, whatever it takes. This segment of More Sports and Less Levine brought to you by Northeast Factory Direct. Uh, this day in sports history, uh, November 11, 1946. Madison Square Garden opens with a Nick loss to the uh, Chicago Stags. As of uh, 2019, which is now, they have the lost 11 straight to the Cleveland Cavaliers at MSG, including last night. And the, and the GM and everybody had to come out and explain how they got their butts kicked by the Cavs to that degree, right? Tell me what he said. I don't know what he said, but it's like, if I guess if the Cavs beat you in your building, you have to come out and try to <laughs> rationalize it. The Cavs are looking good, though. I mean, I, I, our Chris Fedor covers the Cavs in such a tremendous way. What I know about the Cavs is from reading Chris Fedor. A young backcourt, man. A couple smart veterans yeah. in Tristan Thompson and Kevin Love and a young backcourt that I think you can have some hope about. All right, so we try to keep these things short. Apparently, Cleveland Bill doesn't know that. <laughs> Less is sometimes said if a team's number one quarterback goes down for more than a couple of games, the team isn't going to go anywhere. But I was just musing that when Tom Matty took Baltimore a long way after Johnny Unitas went down, Tom Brady did well in, re in place of uh, Drew Bledsoe. Nick Foles won a Super Bowl after Wentz went down. Ryan Tannehill doing well in place of Marcus Mariota. Mason Rudolph has replaced Ben Roethlisberger quite well. Ryan Fitzpatrick has done well replacing the starter in Miami. So what do you think about that? Uh, I would I'd rather, rather not... Have it happen to my quarterback? Yeah, I'd rather have Ben <laughs> Roethlisberger if I were the Steelers. So, right. I mean, most of the time your backup isn't Tom Brady. Um, but, but it does say something about if the structure of your team is in place, if your coaching is in place, if your culture is in place, you have a much better chance to withstand it. And I'd like to make my semi-annual plea that just because Brady was taken in the sixth round doesn't mean there's some sixth rounder out there that is going to do what he did. No, I actually, and I don't know if we're going to do this on this show, it's the guy in college that in my maybe 15 years covering college sports that reminds me the most of Tom Brady probably is Joe Burrow at LSU. Oh, good point. And um, just the throws he makes, like he's not the most athletic guy in the world, but he seems in control of things. He's got like a little edge about him. I, I thought at a, an Ohio State practice when Joe Burrow was in Columbus, I looked out at him and I said to the guys, I said, you know, I'm not saying he is Tom Brady. He just looks like right. Tom Brady, like his hair, his stature, <laughs> the way he sort of stands. It just And now 
he's going to win the Heisman, and now he's playing like Tom Brady. Well, it's going to be fun, this this playoff, if things go the way it looks like they're going to go, although there could be a, an upset somewhere along the line. This could be fun. Clemson's good, but I think it's pretty obvious that the two best teams in the country are the Ohio State Buckeyes and the team quarterbacked by their former backup quarterback, the LSU Tigers. All right, uh, Chase Young, is that suspension, whatever it is, is it fair? Or is anything fair in this particular deal? And what are they holding on? Are they doing more investigating? So most of this stuff, when you have an issue like this and there's an alleged NCAA violation about Chase Young taking a loan from a family friend and then paying that back, but you can't, you can't do that stuff. So if we want to have a discussion about like what should a college player be allowed to do, we could be here for 10 hours. I think most of society has come around to the idea, like the NCAA is nuts, the rules are stupid, the kids are taken advantage of, and some people disagree with that, but like that is a circle the drain kind of argument. Stuff's going to change. But yeah, because as of now, it's a rule. It's a rule. So. I think the most productive thing to talk about now, because again, they're moving toward a world where kids are going to be allowed to be paid in some way outside from outside sources. That's coming. That's what this whole thing about likeness and image is about. Right now, you can't do it. That's why he's suspended. If he paid it back, that's much better than like taking money for something and not paying it back. I think they're in the process right now. This was brought to Ohio State's attention very recently. They investigate it, they find things, they send it to the NCAA, and then a process begins. What we're waiting for now is the official ruling for the NCAA. There's a lot of speculation, there's sources saying stuff. My guess, and seems like most people's guess, is two games, which would mean the second game is against Rutgers, and Ohio State could beat Rutgers with their third team. Okay, the, the one thing that people question me about, and I don't know the answer, is, um, is with with in in the young situation what difference does it make when he met the guy because a lot of it with the ncaa is if you if you can't do something as a college athlete that a normal student can't do so if you are getting anything because you're an athlete that's when the ncaa alarm bells go off this family friend is someone that he met before his freshman year in college. It's not somebody from third grade. If it was somebody from third grade, you can get a loan from your family friend because anybody could do that. If this person became your friend right when you were about to become a huge college football star, then it's a question of like, well, is it really a long-standing relationship or is it a relationship based upon the fact that you're a great football player? If it's based on that idea, you have now gotten an edge over the average student because you are great at sports and that's where the NCAA comes in. I'm not saying it makes sense. Or that's the issue. Or is this a LeBron James Hummer? No, no, no. Well, and that's what I said all along with this stuff. There is no we very little everything's anonymous sources on this stuff, other than Chase putting out a statement and his lawyer saying it's a family friend, it was a loan. All along I've said if this is it, then they they should be fine, right? Two games probably is what it's gonna be and they're fine. But whenever you go down this road, you never know if this is it or not. There's nothing that indicates that it's more than this. But until the final ruling comes in, you can't be 100% sure. Nationally, does this affect his Heisman situation? Dead. Uh, he's not going to win the Heisman. I mean, Top 10? Oh, yeah, top 10 for sure. But there's 870 media voters, and a lot of them are like old-time guys with old-time ideas about stuff. And if you get a whiff of NCAA things around you, enough of those 870 people are going to knock you off their ballot, especially when a defensive guy, you're not going to win. Look at these numbers. 15 and a half tackles for loss. Five fumbles forced. And that's not all against Miami of Ohio. No, I mean, he had a couple of them against Wisconsin, right. and he was saying, I talked with Chase for a while, walking down the steps from the locker room after the Wisconsin game about the Heisman, and he's making the point, listen, I'm not a quarterback, but if I force a fumble and we score off that fumble, I'm helping produce points. Let's quickly uh, recap Saturday's games. A good good weekend for college uh, football. Let's take a look at what happened there. You got LSU with the big one, 40. Uh, they, they beat Alabama. Minnesota, are they for real? Don't more, know. more real than I thought. They're they're very likely opponent for Ohio State in the Big Ten championship game. Clemson gets a win. So does Georgia, defeating uh, Missouri. And of course, you know Ohio State's situation with that big win and uh, that against Maryland. Two one six five seven five zero four zero three is the number to call. Northeast Factory Direct. Three great locations: east, west, and uh, to the to the, the south, being on Freeway Drive in Macedonia. That's a new one. Lakeland Boulevard in Euclid. Then you got West One Fortieth Street. 
And the bottom line is nobody's going to touch their everyday savings or quality. They, if you look at their stores, you say, well, how in the world can they be in business against the big box stores and how beautiful they look? Well, that's exactly why they can save you money. They uh, save you money because they pay about one-tenth the rent that the big box stores pay. Check it out, northeastfactorydirect.com or the three great locations. Sokolowski University Inn, winner of the James Beard Foundation Award three years ago. Only five in the country make it each and every year. To uh, my knowledge, uh, Sokolowski is the only one in Cleveland to make it. Makes them Cleveland's oldest family-owned and operated restaurant open 11 to 3 Monday through Friday and Friday and Saturday nights for dinner. When we come back, we'll take a look at the Facebook question of the day and your responses. Doug Lane Maurice is with us. More sports and Les Levine continues exclusively on Cleveland.com. No other company or product can match the features, benefits, and warranty of an authentic Nature Stone floor. I had an epoxy-based sand paint on my floor that deteriorated, and that's why I called Nature Stone. Why paint? It's expensive, it's ugly, and it doesn't last. Nature Stone is always affordable. It's beautiful, and with Russell's promise, our true unconditional warranty, you will never have to replace your garage floor again. Get Nature Stone installed by the end of October and save up to half off. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line. A long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Downton Casino now has sports betting. Use one of the 50 state-of-the-art Bet America kiosks to place your bet. Then watch your favorite games on our new HD televisions or visit our new sportsbook area. Only at Presque Isle Downton Casino. All right, time to look at uh, this date in Les Levine history. Doug, uh, November 11, 2019. Uh, Les is involved in an accident. His 11 co-workers sent him a get well soon card by a vote of six to five. God, you are a handsome man. Look at that. Mesmerizing. <laughs> I would have yeah. signed your card, Les. I would sign your card. You'd have signed I would. my card. Yeah. Get well. Oh, that well, card. Get well. get well, yeah. No, get I well. I thought it was uh, like my dance card or <laughs> something like that. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. Let's take a look at the Facebook question of the day. That is, is a win just a win, or are the Browns' mistakes too much to overlook? Let's take a look at what you people had to say. Wayne Richard Lyons, there you go. Every week we hope, we hope the kitchen and his staff will, will uh, help the team avoid penalties. There you go. Let's continue on. Jay Slagle, soon if it uh, wasn't for Scott Norwood. Wow, that's nasty bringing up Scott Norwood. That was Norwood. a little tougher. It was 53-yarder to the bad end of the field. Correct. And by the way, was there any chance that uh, that that timeout that was called by Cleveland because Denver because uh, Buffalo didn't was it had anything to do with the wind conditions on that side? Because that's the only uh, thing I will accept. Joe Schobert was playing deep safety for them after right. some guys moved around, and you could not risk a snap with Joe Schobert, Schobert at deep safety. They got caught in an impossible defensive look, and I think they were desperate to make sure Buffalo did not snap the ball with that alignment, so I, I got it. Let's take a look. We'll continue on to see what people had to say. Well, there you have it. Mistakes, mistakes. By this time of the season, you shouldn't be making these mistakes. Tom Randazzo says, hey, Les, great show. I feel the same way uh, as you. It's a win, but Freddie Kitchens can't coach a game with mind-boggling play calls and silly decisions. I'm happy for the players getting the win and overcoming the incompetent head coach. Even the, uh, but even the weakest opponent is dangerous with Kitchens. I do think uh, a three and six is a very different world than two and seven. 
There is some reason with Kareem Hunt back. You still think maybe Odell Beckham Jr. will get going. There's some reason for hope here. I think nine wins still might get you a wild card. That's not off the table. So it changes, I think, the atmosphere around the team, three and six versus two and seven, believe it or not. Let's but check. Oh, I'm sorry. This is not good enough to get you to nine wins if you keep playing this way. Correct. All right, let's uh, go to the voicemail of truth and reason, see what uh, we, we heard from people. Well, I believe we have a resurgence of Mack and Biner 1985 with uh, Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. Nick, Mack and Biner 1985. Wouldn't that be something special? All right, do you see, good day. see any similarities to that? Mack and Biner versus uh, Chubb and Hunt? I, I will say, I mean, we see a lot of teams now, right, use that two running back look. Right. And, and, I thought early this season there were times on really long drives where Nick Chubb's getting the ball eight times in a single drive, and I thought he was wearing down at the end of a drive. I think Kareem Hunt will help that. So, yeah, I, I think that's a great point to make. We haven't heard from Ellie from Brook Park in a long time. Let's hear what she had to say on the voice of truth, voicemail of Truth and Reason. Hi, Les. This is Ellie from Brook Park. I just wanted you to know I was okay. I had some health issues, and I'm better now. And I just want you to know I'm still around. And your hair still looks good to me whenever I see yeah. it. Yeah, I, I take my hair in. Surprise at Washington one. I'll try and call okay. it another time. But nice talking to you. Like Thanks, goodbye. Ellie. Number one, quickly, are you surprised the uh, Nationals won? Uh, no, I think any time you have great starting pitching, you give yourself a shot. So I wasn't super shocked by that. Okay, let's go to Ken, who's in Defiance, Ohio. Hello, Ken. Hi, Les and Doug. Hey, I agree with you. If they never have another shuttle pass, I'll be tickled. <laughs> and did you notice Unless after it works. that shuttle pass call that almost cost them the game that Todd Munkin and uh, Freddie were having a conversation? I've never seen them close to each other during a game. And no, that's that's like mainly because Munkin's upstairs. Heck. Right? I think that's and right. And then they... Uh, that was right before they had the winning drive, so they seemed to have called better plays after that conversation. Just wondered if you noticed what was going on with them. Yeah, I sure did. Anything else, Ken? Uh, well, that and that uh, uh, play calling that cost them the safety, I don't understand that at all either. But I always I, assume if you've got the ball on the one-yard line I, and you threw, call for a pass, I always assume there's going to be a holding penalty and an automatic safety. I yeah, just assume right. that. You know something bad's going to happen. Ken, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Thanks, Ken. Uh, it is hard because it wasn't it wasn't a missed block, right? It's like I don't cr I don't trust the tackles in that situation, um, but it was the alignment. It was a, it was a free runner at linebacker, and that's a protection issue. And it looked like Baker Mayfield was looking at Odell Beckham. He did have a, a hot route over the middle that was there if he could have gotten to it. So there were some things in place to try to prevent that. But again, it's not a bad idea to try to run it there. Yeah, explore your interests, find a program that puts you on a path to a bright future. All from Tri C ranking. Uh, Number 10 in the nation in conferring associate's degrees in health professional and related sciences. Northfield Park, your home for live and simulcast racing. They've got live racing uh, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday. Weekends, it's uh, 6.40 is the post time, 6 o'clock for the others. And uh, free admission, free parking every day at Northfield Park. Doug Blay-Maurice and I come back in a moment. We'll check out some how, how come quickies and more. More sports and less Levine continues exclusively on cleveland.com. No other company or product can match the features, benefits, and warranty of an authentic Nature Stone floor. There was moisture in the basement. It ruined the carpeting. The smell was terrible. We didn't feel safe in our own basement, and that's when we called Nature Stone. And with Russell's promise, our true unconditional warranty, you will never have to replace your basement flooring again. Get Nature Stone installed by the end of October and save up to half off. Schedule your free cost estimate easily online today at naturestone.com. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen. For old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. 
The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students kindergarten through 12th grade can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. Bud Shaw will join us tomorrow from WKYC.com. Wednesday night, the D-Man, Dennis Maniloff. Then Thursday, it'll be Hoynesy, Paul Hoynes. I was told he did a classic rant, except for one thing, he forgot uh, Baker Mayfield's name. But other than that, he, he, he was terrific. Uh, let's look at some how-come quickies here. Oh, but you can follow us on Facebook, facebook.com, slash more sports and less the new content posted each and every day. All right, there's some reason for this. This is from... I don't know who's it from. Oh, Big Ed. There's an answer to this. How come kamikaze pilots wore helmets? Do you know why? Wow. Why? And by the way, you have to grade these. This one is an all-timer because they didn't want them getting killed before they hit their target. Oh. So it makes okay, sense. Okay, that makes sense. All right, now you got to grade this one on a okay. zero to ten. How come your shins are the best devices for finding furniture in a dark, dark room? <laughs> Very relatable. That's a nine. Very <laughs> relatable. That's a, I didn't know very relatable came into the scoring. Oh, for sure. All right, uh, Mr. Gullible. How come when my son asked, can I have a bookmark, I was very sad because he still doesn't know my name is Brian. <laughs> I think that's funny. May I have a bookmark? I'll take it. That's a ten. That's funny. No, no, I, I forgot to tell you one ground rule. What's no it? tens. Oh, no, no, it's a nine and a half. Nine and a half. Sorry. How come two silkworms in a race ended in a tie? A tie. Oh, I get it. Oh, that's a four. No, I'm, I'm not a smart <laughs> man. If I have to think about it, I'm in trouble. Sorry, yeah. that's my bad. John Patrick, I think, is hitting the wall here. How come life jackets aren't called float coats? Uh, I, I like rhymes. That's yeah. a five because it rhymed. A five. That's like the SAT just signing your name. Float coat. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to Bill, who's in North Olmstead. Bill, good evening. How are you? Good, Russ. How are you doing? I'm okay. I got to tell you, when the uh, all star penalty happened, I literally jumped out of my chair and said, This will be the difference in the game because they'll get a field goal. And I was sure the game was going to come down to three points one way or another. But more importantly, it didn't give us the opportunity to fail again on another goal line stand, which I think would have turned off the fans created negative momentum, and just probably cost us the game. So I was very pleased. Do you, you think that penalty was taken on? you think that penalty was taken on purpose to save the Browns from what was about to happen? No, I don't think he has the, the guts to do that on his own, and I don't think he was coached to do that, because otherwise he would have just kicked the field goal, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, but, uh, I think you're uh, right, Bill. I think you're right. I think sometimes first-year coaches get caught trying to be too aggressive. Yeah. They want to be aggressive. I think you're right, Bill. That would have been too aggressive. Well, it's aggressive, but I, I think some of them also try to show off to the, the opponent. I, I think if, when Freddie Kitchen got up against Bill Belichick, don't you think he's thinking things along that line, that, that he can show that he can play on the same field as him? Well, hopefully he's not that gullible to think that, but you never know. Uh, second of all, I'm not quite ready to put Jarvis Landry in the same category as Brian Seip or Sandy Alomar, but I'll tell you what I mean. I, I think he should be caught a little bit of uh, leeway for his foolish penalty that cost us eight points. Because again, I thought when that happened, it was gonna, the game was going to come down to three points one way or another. And well, you know, I it doesn't, Seip Bill. It doesn't. Is, and, uh, Sandy Alomar Jr. Brian Seip won the NFL MVP in 1980, yet through the Biggest choke pass I think I've ever seen in my life with the Red Right 88, but he really didn't take a lot of flack for that. And Sandy Alomar, who had an unbelievable 1997 season, when he didn't slide in the home plate in the eighth inning of Game 7, probably cost us a world championship. But again, Sandy Alomar isn't going to get a lot of, lot of blame. Yeah, the thing but, on uh, Sype, though, it, it was minus 100 degrees, something like that. I think just being out there, and, and by the way, Mike Davis made that catch. Greg Pruitt told me, Greg Pruitt the next year wound up at uh, Oakland, and he said that Davis, if you handed him the ball right. on an 80 degree day, he couldn't catch it. And on that I, day, I minus that, 12 degrees story, or something but, uh, makes, makes the catch. I, 
got to know Don Cockroft a little bit, and he said there's no way I would have ever missed that field goal. And I, b- I believe him. Uh, do you remember well, let, a, hold a on a second. Hold, for, time, for out, the time out, time out, time out. name of Pete Banasek? Yeah, I do. Well, but, one of the things that I remember about Pete Banasek, he scored more touchdowns on one-yard plunges. And probably in an eight-year career, he had less than 1,000 yards, but he never fumbled, and he got the touchdown yeah, every time. Well, the game's changed. You don't yeah, have that I'm guy thinking, anymore. You know, here's, here's Chubb, who, gosh darn it, he's looking good. He's, God, he's impressive. I think that was one of the best draft choices we've ever made. And he's fighting for yards as he's coming down the field. But all of a sudden, he gets to the one-yard line, and he's either they're, they're targeting him or he's tired yeah. or whatever. But I would think Hunt would be a great guy to be the next Pete Banasek of the Browns. All right, Bill, got to go. Unfortunately, that position doesn't exist. Got about a, about a minute. Anything you want to add to the proceedings? It's the offensive line. I think a lot of the red zone stuff is boils down to a lack of faith in the offensive line, uh, which permeates, again, everything with the offense. And, and Nick Chubb doesn't forget how to be a running back no. at the one-yard After line. After 99 A lot years. of times the holes aren't there. Guys are getting penetration. They have unblocked guys. Um, I think when they reshape this offensive line in the offseason, and we all know that they will, I think that will change them in the red zone next year, and it's the most important thing you need to do. Thursday improve. night, Cleveland and Pittsburgh. Who wins? Browns. Well, I th- I no think, hesitation. I think they have to beat some good teams. I still think the the rise of Odell Beckham, and I talked with Odell a little bit after the game Sunday, he felt like there was still more there for the him than they took. And I this guy is not going to go through a whole year without scoring a big touchdown <laughs> to win a game. And I think Thursday night might be the night. A great job by Doug Lay Maurice. You can read him at uh, Cleveland.com and The Plain Dealer. We'll see you tomorrow night. Bud Shaw will join us of all the shows I've ever done. This was the most recent.